Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and I've been looking at some Atari 7800 source code that was originally written in the 1980s, and that was rescued from floppy disks found in a dumpster behind an Atari building. So one thing I would like to ask anybody writing games for a company now or making software for a company now in general, and just I'm asking companies in general, please, please, please archive your source code. Save your source code. Anyway, the webpage here suggests that you run an emulator for the Atari ST to run some of the original programs that people used to develop for the 7800, and those development tools ran on the Atari ST. But I think it would be cool to be able to assemble slash compile, whatever you want to call it, using a modern assembler like DASM. So let's take a look at the source code for Ms. Pac-Man for the 7800. I'm just going to go through the files and mark down the ones that have an org statement because that will give me a sense of the organization of the code. And right away, we see that n.s has an org at fff8. The 6502 starts up. It looks at this memory address here to find the memory address that it should start running code at, in which case that's going to be main. So we start with main. So that's good to know. Are there any org statements in here? General utility routines, okay. Sound driver stuff, any orgs here? Nope. Title.s, nope. Speed. Huh, there's no org commands in here. Usually assembly code has a lot more org statements, especially for something like the 7800. Let's see, no org input care, no org in path. Oh, here's a weird file. So I'm going to make a note about what this is. Uh, these look like memory locations, A000, C000. Uh, let me make a note that that is mup.s, and this is just weird. All right. <laughs> Animate, start animations, yay. MS move routines for the Miss Pack. Okay. No org here. Where are the orgs? This is MS def, no org here. MS care, character set. Ah, okay. MS care.s. So that's at C000. And there's probably a bunch of other orgs in here. No, there's not. Huh. The 7800 graphics chip is deeply weird and likes to do different things with 100 hex. I shouldn't say 100. 100 hex offsets, not 100 decimal. And I don't see that sort of stuff happening here. This all must be just magically right. All right. Let's see what else. Monster. No org here. Oh, this is weird. Okay, let's make a note. M do it. Dot S. So this is, is this the output of the assembler? I mean, in the sense of it's telling you what it's assembled, or is this some sort of input file telling you what to assemble? Not sure. I'm going to say this mysterious list of files with other stuff. All right. So, oh, wait, no, that wasn't. M do it. Sorry, what was that? Just a second. Ah, okay, that file we just looked at was actually called mget. This is the m do it file. And this is another mysterious list of file names. Names with other stuff. And here, ah, the file names all have L in front. I wonder if L stands for linker. Are we linking things? Here we have WR. Maybe it's telling us to write something out and call it ms.s. Maybe it's combining files. I have no idea what it's doing. So it's listing a bunch of files. I've seen Maria OS before. It has a bunch of equates for memory maps of the 7800 to the various graphics registers, yada, yada, yada. So it makes sense that that would come first. L main comes relatively soon in the code. And if I scroll down a bit, ah, L end comes near the end. And then there's a bunch of other stuff, whatever that stuff all means. Here it says macro. Okay, great. So I bet that this indicates the order that we want to assemble stuff in somehow. 
So I'm going to suggest that probably suggests the order, order of assembly. And what does W mean? I wonder if that indicates that whatever the next file that it's assembling is needs to start on a word boundary. So it starts on an even address. That's just a guess. I have no idea what W means. So let's keep going here. And we have Maria OS. Oh, that's the thing I said. That's a bunch of equates. That's usual. That doesn't have any orgs in it. Let's see. Here's the main routine. No org. Okay. Let's see. Is there any org in macro? Let's see. Oh, is this an actual macro? Okay, we'll need to think about that maybe if we're porting this to another assembler. Figure out what the syntax is. Load map. Maze drawing routine. No org. Kernel. Ah, this has to do with the uh, 7800. The Maria graphics chip on it is psychotic. It is a really strange chip. It's very powerful for its time. Arguably more powerful than what was in the Nintendo NES, but very difficult for programmers to wrap their heads around. Let's see. There's no org in here. Very weird. No org here. Initialization routines. Is there an org here? There better be an org somewhere. Let's see. Is there an org here? Nope. 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 What did I miss? There must be an org in here somewhere. Did it, is it in main and then I missed it? Just a second. Let's check out main. Did I overlook it? Huh. There is no other org. So let me think about that for a second. So mscar.s, that's the only place we have an org. Well, other than the reset vector. Let me check out this mdoit file again. So let's open that up in Visual Studio Code and see what comes first. Okay, there's the Maria OS. That was just a bunch of equates. There's msdef. Let's take a look at that. And I bet that is just going to be a bunch of equates as well. Either that or RAM memory locations. Equates, equates, equates. This is msdef. All equates, all equates. Anything but equates? Nope, nope, just equates. Okay, so none of this actually specifies code yet. This is all just defining constants. So the next thing in that file is mscar. Oh, and that's the first one with the org. Okay, so it looks like the code starts at C000 and just keeps going without any other jumping around. Okay, so this may not be too terribly painful. Okay, so let me save this under a new name. I'm going to save it as, let's say, MS2021, because that's the current year. Let's save that. All right, and let me change my language target to DASM. And I think we need to have a processing directive at the front, or a processor, I should say. Processor 6502 to let the assembler know it's a 6502. And we'll just turn these into includes. So we'll assume at some point that we change the file name to .asm because that's kind of a modern thing to do. So I just need to take all the L's and turn them into includes and do this. I'll stop the recording for this and come back in a second. So here's the DASM manual. It has this command called align, align the current program counter to an in byte boundary with an optional fill value. I don't think it matters. Here's an example where they put in 10 bytes and then they use align 256 and it lines it up with the next 100 hex page boundary. So assuming this is doing what I think it wants to do, I think we could use align 2 in its place. But I actually have no idea what that W is meaning to do. 